This episode is sponsored by Marvel Strike Force. Welcome back to another exciting full build episode here on That Works. Today we're going to be doing something that you guys have been requesting for us to make for years and years, ever since Infinity War and Endgame came out and has had another resurgence in requests now that Marvel's Hawkeye has come out, and that is Ronin's Sword. And not only are we going to be making Ronin's Sword for you here today, but Marvel Strike Force, today's sponsor, has challenged us to make Ronin Sword using both historical, old school techniques and modern, new school technology. And not only that, they've decided to take the challenge one step further and ask us to do something else that you guys have asked for for a long time, and that is to forge the entire blade out of titanium. Now, Marvel Strike Force is a squad based RPG game where you can play over 180 different heroes and villains throughout the Marvel Universe. And not only that, each one of those heroes and villains has different variants and skins that you can choose from and customize. So not only are you putting together a squad to fight with, but also the style in which you do so. Marvel Strike Force is completely free to download and play on the iOS and the Android. And be sure to support the channel by downloading it using the link in the description below. And now, without further ado, let's get to the first part of the challenge and see if Ilya can forge this entire sword blade out of titanium. Not only do we see Ronan using the sword, but we see Hawkeye or Clint Barton using it as Hawkeye as an Avenger as well. And this is a nice nod to the comics where he apprentices under the swordsman. Now titanium isn't specifically difficult to forge, however it has its own set of limitations that you have to work with. Once you get it up to temperature, it forges like very, very hot steel and you actually have to be careful when forging it specifically underneath a power hammer because you might move the metal too fast. It doesn't re-weld to itself just like steel does, so you can cause cold shuts if you're not careful. Since the challenge for Marvel Strike Force was to forge the blade completely out of titanium, one of the things we have to do is to make those slots along the back of the sword blade in the forging. To do that, we're going to use very similar methods that you'd use in traditional ironwork. First marking where the slots will be, cold, then heating the entire piece up and begin hot punching the slots in.
At this point, you might be slightly concerned about the shape of our slots. No worries, Ilya's gonna use the hot cut tool and a little finessing here and there to get them nice and lined up before I move on to grinding where I can grind all of the excess that bulged out back on the spine of the blade during the hot punch. That was awesome. You don't get to see a blade, especially one this big, forged out of titanium very often. Not only that, hot punch and the drifting of all the slots was amazing. I've never seen that done at all. At this point, it's time to start doing some of the rough grinding. We gotta grind off all the slag that's on the sides that happened during the punching. That way we can give it back to Ilya and he can do all the final forging and straighten the blade. Now, titanium forges very much like very, very hot, malleable steel. However, it grinds very, very differently. It's abrasion resistant, meaning that it doesn't want to grind. You have to use very fresh belts all the way through and you're gonna notice some things very, very differently. One of the major things is, is that it doesn't throw orange or yellow sparks. The sparks are very white. They're very, very, very bright. So I'll be wearing tinted glasses while I do all of the grinding and it smokes tremendously. It's very, very smelly. So I'll have a respirator and tinted glasses the entire time I grind it. So I'm gonna start by grinding off the slag, doing a little perimeter grinding, and then we'll get back in Ilya's hands. Now that our blade is nice and straight, it's time to start doing some of the finished grinding and detailing of the blade. Now, as I grind the edge and other details on the sander, I'm also gonna take some breaks and I'm gonna start truing up the slotted portions on the blade. And as I said before, titanium is very abrasive resistant, so it doesn't like to be ground at all, so I'm not sure what the best method is gonna to be to true up those slots, but I'm gonna start by using a cutoff wheel. I'm gonna use some carbide cutters on a rotary tool. I'm even gonna use some files. We'll see what works best. I'm probably gonna end up using a mix of all of it. So let's get to work. smarter not harder I'm sure you've heard it a million times but it's true
per the challenge, the blade portion of our sword was forged from titanium. Now the rest of the parts are all gonna be forged and machined out of aluminum. Now we wanna add a little something else to this challenge and see if we can hot punch the suba or the guard and create the tang slot in there all in the forging. So not only are we forging titanium, but we're also gonna try and forge some aluminum. Now the tricky part about forging aluminum in contrast to titanium, which you forge super hot, you need to forge aluminum at very low temperatures. So Ilya's gonna be doing all the heating up in our regular forge, but he's gotta keep a close eye on it to make sure that he doesn't overheat the material or it's gonna just crumble. Just like this sword build has a ton of challenges, so does Marvel Strike Force. Whether it's different game modes including arena, blitz, raids, or alliance war, or the daily challenges that it offers and new objectives each and every day. They also have limited event campaigns such as Shang-Chi, Black Widow, and Eternals themed events. Now this sword has very similar characteristics to a traditional Japanese katana. It has the habaki, it has the suba, and it has the suka or the handle. The next part for us to make is the habaki. Now you can clearly see in the images from both the movie and the TV show that the habaki is made in two pieces and it's held together with four machine screws. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take two pieces, two slices of aluminum, open them up, machine my slot where the tang goes clamp them back together, do all the final forming, and then hold those two pieces together with four machine screws. Now some of you may be asking, are they going to make the sword the retractable sword like it's seen in the TV show? And there's a few problems with that. Basically, if we were going to do that, it would be just like this toy lightsaber, right? We'd have a hollow piece, a hollow piece, and then you could have a solid piece for the tip, but it would simply just be a prop. We're not really into making props here on that works. We like to make real swords. Not only that, but if you look at the sword itself, the handle is actually narrower than the thickest, widest portion of the blade. That means the blade could never actually fit into that handle in the real world. We're fresh out of nanotechnology here. So forging it out of titanium solid is gonna have to do. Not only that, but in the original appearance of this sword in the Avengers movies, Clint Barton draws it from a scabbard. So I believe that originally this sword was never supposed to be retractable in the first place. Otherwise, why would it be in a scabbard? He would probably carry it just like a lightsaber on his belt, pull it out, shank the blade out like Wolverine. However, I think originally this sword was never supposed to retract and we're not going to even go through that. We're gonna make this a nice solid sword so we can do some real testing with it at the end.
couple of key points just to note. We here at That Works like to make historical based items. Sure, we make some crazy fantasy stuff sometimes, but we usually don't use weird materials like titanium. However, on a futuristic build like this, there's nothing wrong with using both material that is modern and modern methods to make things. So with that in mind, we're gonna bring in Kevin, who's a CNC machinist, to machine the entire handle portion. After that, there'll be a lot of fiddly detail that we have to add in, but he's gonna do the bulk of the work on a CNC mill because this is a very modern build. We don't really know who made this sword. I'm assuming Clint Barton, after seeing him in the TV show make all the trick arrows, that he probably made it himself. So he probably had access to all kinds of machines and tooling because he mentions when he makes his arrows in the TV show that he doesn't have his workshop. So he must have a very impressive workshop. And in this modern world, you have to have an impressive array of tools just like Clint Barton. So let's head on over to the machine shop and see how Kevin's doing with the design work. The CNC Bridgeport machine that Kevin has isn't just a bought and paid for robot, not just doing all the work. Kevin actually restored this machine. It was basically headed to the scrap yard. He took it from a piece of scrap, retrofitted it to CNC, and now he has a very impressive machine that he built with his own hands to do work just like this. Even though the bulk of the shaping was done on the CNC mill, there's still a ton of detailing and cleanup that has to be done by hand. Basically, I gotta take this rough form, this rough object with lots of machine marks on it, get it nice and smooth, make a nice satin finish so that we can add the blackened color through a process called anodizing. Once again, returning to our reference images, you can see that this handle is held together just like the hibaki, with several different sizes of machine screws. So I have to drill and use a tap to thread the holes so that I can machine the screws in to hold our two halves of our handles together as one. Even though I got two sizes of machine screws, both large and small, I noticed that in the button portion of our handle, one of the screws was even smaller. So what do you do? Go to the sander and make one.
All right, while we wait for our parts in acid, let me give you a brief explanation, at least to my limited knowledge about what goes on with anodizing aluminum. So with aluminum, you have a layer of oxide, aluminum oxide, Al2O3. Now that layer is very, very thin. When we place it into the sulfuric acid, add an electro charge to it, we're actually causing that oxide to grow. Uh, hexagonal type uh, tubules that come up on the skin. Then when we take it out of it and go into the dye, the dye is then filling that whole surface and since we created a much thicker level, a much, much thicker layer of that aluminum oxide, we now can trap that color in and it becomes a very, very tough, durable finish. Or so I think. Go ahead and take our part out. Just spray it down with some distilled water. And put it right into the dye. All right. All right, that worked great. I've wanted to try to anodize aluminum for a long time. Here we have our rich black color. From here, we'll place the parts into boiling water to seal in the color, and then we'll do a little distressing to all the parts to make them look used, and we're good to go. This build was full of all new challenges. Forging a titanium blade 90% of the way to shape and punching those holes was definitely pushing the limits. Not only that, but we forged aluminum too. The whole team really stepped it up on this build, and we finally made our first Marvel build here on That Works.
thanks again to Marvel Strike Force for sponsoring this epic build. If you're looking for a great game to play, be sure to check them out by clicking the link in the description to download it today. And if you want another great way to support the channel, why don't you try checking out our new shop t-shirt, available now at thatworks.shop. Check them out. Gus, to do something that you guys have... Now that the blade is slotted out, all I have to do is true up all the tiny slots and get right in on it and work them a little bit. Did you, did you just do a superhero landing? And thanks for watching our very first Marvel build here on That Works. If you enjoyed this video and all the extra effort that we put into it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And as always, tell us in the comments below what build you'd like to see this team build next. And don't forget, if you haven't done it already, please consider subscribing to this channel, That Works.